One day, a woman was running an errand that took her through a fairly rough part of town. When she got out of her car, she shut the door. She realized immediately that she had just locked her keys and her cell phone in the car behind her. She looked around and spotted a metal coat hanger lying on the street and tried to use it to break into her own car, but wasn't able to get the door open. Feeling desperate, she prayed, Dear God, please send someone to help me. I've often been asked the question, why doesn't God do miracles anymore like we see in the Bible? Where is God anyway? Well, let's look at some examples from a couple of my favorite movies. How many of you have seen The Truman Show? In it, the main character, Truman Burbank, played by Jim Carrey, has his entire life broadcast to millions of people in the ultimate reality TV show. The catch is that Truman doesn't know his life is a show. Everyone he knows and everything he experiences is crafted by the show's director, Kristoff, inside a giant domed shape set. Kristoff controls everything right down to the weather. Take a look. Oh, she blows. audience. He was born in front of a live audience. A lot of people think God works the same way, controlling all the details of life on Earth, including human behavior and the weather. In another film, we get to see the true story of NASA's doomed flight to the moon in Apollo 13. Everything that can go wrong does go wrong on this mission, and it seems almost certain that these astronauts will die in the cold vacuum of space. Here's a clip. Gene, we have a situation brewing with the carbon dioxide. We had a CO2 filter problem on the lunar module. Five filters on the limb, which were meant for two guys for a day and a half. So I told the doctor. And they're already up to eight on the gauges. Anything over 15 and you get impaired judgment, blackouts, the beginnings of brain asphyxia. What about the scrubbers on the command module? They take square cartridges. And the ones on the limb are round. <laughs> Tell me this isn't a government operation. It just isn't a contingency we've remotely looked at. Those CO2 levels are going to be getting toxic. Well, I suggest you gentlemen invent a way to put a square peg in a round hole. Rapidly. Okay, people, listen up. People upstairs handed us this one, and we got to come through. We got to find a way to make this fit into the hole for this. We're using nothing but that. Let's get it organized. Okay, okay, let's build a filter. Better get some coffee going too, someone. In response to this catastrophe, millions of people around the world begin to pray for their safe return. The Pope even says a special mass on their behalf. And God moves. Against all odds, the crew of Apollo 13 survives. But God doesn't swoop in with some divine supernatural intervention. Instead, God uses the ingenuity, persistence, and skill of NASA scientists and engineers to bring these men home safely. So which is it? Is God sitting on a lofty perch, turning the knobs and adjusting the weather to affect our lives? Or is God moving through people? Well, the short answer is yes. God is God and moves in the world both directly and indirectly. But when we look at scripture, we see that God primarily works in the world through human instru instruments. I don't pretend to have all the answers to the question, where is God? God is so much bigger and more complex than I could ever comprehend. But when we look at the life and work of Jesus, 
we clearly see a picture of God that works through people. At the start of the Gospel of John, we can read a beautiful passage about God becoming human in the person of Jesus. The message translation by Eugene Peterson says, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. God is doing something new here, interacting with creation in a way we've never seen before. The fancy church word for this is incarnation, which literally means a person who embodies in the flesh a deity. The incarnation tells us that God actively engages in the world through human beings, especially through Jesus Christ. But all of that happened 2,000 years ago, right? Where, where do we see God now? Where do we see Jesus now? Well, in the words of Mr. Rogers, look for the helpers. As the church, we are called to be Jesus' hands, feet, and heart to the world around us. It is our sacred, sacred responsibility to be vessels of God's love and grace to the people we encounter every day. When people fight for justice and equality, God is at work. When the hungry are fed and the sick are cared for, God is moving. When our leaders seek to resolve conflict through peaceful means rather than war, God is at work. When people protect the environment and be good stewards of creation, God is there. Back to the story at the beginning where the lady locked her keys in her car. Well, right after she finished praying, a rusty old beat up car came and a rough looking tattooed guy with a biker skull rag got out and started walking over to her. She thought, dear Lord, this is who you sent to help me? She was desperate, so when he asked if she needed help, she said, can you help me break into my car? The guy said, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. He took the coat hanger from her and in no time flat had the door open. She gave him a huge hug and said, thank you so much, you are a very nice man. He looked right back at her and said, lady, I'm not a nice man. I just got out of prison today and served two years for auto theft. I've only been out for an hour. She looked right back into his eyes and said, thank you God for sending me a professional. Let's pray. God, I pray that as we go from this place and as we go out into the world to school and to work and to our churches and to the grocery store and walking around downtown, God. I pray that you would help us to see you in the people around us, to see the ways that you are moving, to see the ways that you are working, God, and especially to see the places where there is a need, God, so that you could use us as the helper, so that we could be your hands and feet and heart to the people that we encounter that need you. God, help us to pray and recognize that there is power in prayer and that we ask you for the things that we need. But help us pray like it depends on you and work like it depends on us so that your kingdom can be built here and now and among us, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.